Hello everyone, my name is Dimension Master Studios, and welcome back to another episode of How Long Would Blank Go to Jail? I am planning on turning this into a series of videos where every Friday I will be releasing a brand new video going over the crimes committed by various Ninjago villains and seeing how long their sentences would end up being. I've already made one of these videos when it comes to Harumi, and so in the following weeks I will be doing the remaining members of the Council of the Crystal King before the events of Crystallize have begun. And when it comes to today's video, I will be going over Pythor and seeing how many crimes he's committed and how long he would go to prison. And just like I said when it came to my Harumi video, if I end up getting a term wrong when it comes to the crime that Pythor committed, I apologize when it comes to that. And additionally, when it comes to this, if the sentencing that I say is different from the sentencing that you have when it comes to a crime, that is also completely fine because I was finding a variety of different sentences for the actual crime. And so you can think of this as being less of an exact amount and more a general idea as to how long these villains will go to jail. So let us begin. Starting off, we can obviously mark down Pythor for cannibalism, considering the fact that he ate the other members of his Serpentine tribe while he was trapped inside the Anacondri tomb. However, when it comes to the actual sentencing, I wasn't able to find any kind of sentence as to how long Pythor would go to jail for when it comes to cannibalism. So we're just going to mark this thing down as a mystery, because again, I wasn't able to find anything when it came to laws here in the U.S. Up next, we have Pythor down on four cases of theft, the first one being the map together Serpentine Trines, two cases when it comes to the Fang Blades, one with the Blade Cup, the other one for all four Fang Blades when Pythor took them from the Ninja, and the last one was the Serpentine Sap that he took from Ninjago's museum. And the sentencing for theft is 15 years, so Pythor would end up getting a 60-year sentence. Up next, we have two cases of kidnapping, both of them actually involving Lloyd, once during Season 1 and once during Season 3. And when it comes to the actual sentence, Pythor would end up going to jail for 40 years because it is a 20-year sentence when it comes to kidnapping. And since he did it twice, again, 40 years. However, when it comes to the first case of Pythor kidnapping Lloyd, Lloyd was obviously 10 years old when that happened, so that would end up counting as child abduction, which would give Pythor a 4-year sentence. There would also obviously be two cases of child endangerment, considering for one, Pythor did use Lloyd in order to try and get one of the Fang Blades, and then there was obviously everything that happened during the event of the Green Ninja, where Lloyd was obviously in the Fire Temple. So, again, that would count as child endangerment, and that would get... Pythor a one-year sentence for each, so that would be two years in prison. We also have false imprisonment twice, once again, when it comes to Lloyd and once when it comes to Ninja. And with this, that was obviously after the Ninja got into the Constrict I2 and they were trying to get the Fang Blades back. So this would end up counting as, again, false imprisonment, giving Pythor a one-year sentence for each of these. And since he did it three times, that would be three years in jail. Up next, we have Grand Theft Auto, considering him the Serpentine taking that bus in order to try and get to the Lost Sea of Ouroboros, and this would end up giving Pythor a one-year sentence. I can also mark Pythor down on three cases of attempted murder, considering he tried to kill the ninja and Sensibu by trying to have them go into that volcano. There was then the issue once again when it comes to the ninja when they were inside of the Digiverse, and finally there was obviously the time that Pythor tried to kill Lloyd Masako on Day of the Departed. And this would end up giving Pythor a 48-year sentence for each of those, bringing the toll to 144 years behind bars. There's then Pythor releasing the Great Devourer, and I'm pretty sure that when it comes to this whole situation, this would end up counting as some form of terrorism, considering when it comes to Pythor, he definitely wanted the Great Devourer to be unleashed, that way he could try and rule over Ninjago, so again, I'm just going to count this as terrorism, and that would give Pythor the death penalty. We then had some assault and battery charges when it comes to Pythor, specifically when it comes to him going up against Sensei Wu during the penultimate episode of Season 1. There was then him fighting against Pixel and Cyrus Borg while the ninja were trapped in the Digiverse, and finally there was Pythor fighting against Lloyd and Misako. And when it comes to this for the assault and battery charge, each that would end up counting as one-year sentences for that, and since there was three for each, that would end up making a six-year sentence in total. However, when it comes to the assault charge, we can actually bring that up to being assault with a deadly weapon, considering on the first time going up against Sensibu and going up against Lloyd Masako, Pythor obviously had a general staff with him, so that would end up counting as a deadly weapon, and when it came to him going up against Pixel, he had a bone for a weapon. And so when it comes to assault with a deadly weapon, that ends up counting as being a 33-year sentence, so with all these combined, that is a 99-year sentence. 
There's also the whole issue where when it comes to that, there's also assault with intent to kill with it taking place twice. Specifically with him trying to kill the ninja while they were in the Digiverse and once trying to kill Boyd Masako. But just like when it came into the Harumi videos, I wasn't actually able to find a sentencing when it comes to this. So we'll leave that as a question mark. Up next, we can mark down Pythor for a smuggling charge considering the rocket fuel that he and the Nindroids brought. So that way some of the Nindroids could travel into space. And this would end up giving Pythor a 10 year sentence. Finally, we have Conspiracy to Commit Murder, and this obviously happened during the events of Day of the Depart, and where he and the other villains plan to kill each of the ninja, and this end up giving Pythor a life sentence. And with that, let's tally up all the results. And so, with the tallying up of all Pythor's results, when it comes to crimes he committed, you know, we have him down for cannibalism, four cases of theft, two cases of kidnapping, child abduction, two cases of child endangerment, three cases of false imprisonment, Grand Theft Auto, Terrorism, three cases of assault, three cases of assault with deadly weapon, two cases of assault with intent to kill, three cases of battery, two cases of attempted murder, conspiracy to commit murder, and smuggling. That is a grand total of 29 crimes. And when it comes to the sentencing, Pythor would end up getting one life sentence, one death penalty, and 331 years behind bars. That is the final amount that we have when it comes to Pythor and how long he would go to prison. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please, down below, leave me a comment and asking what member of the Council of the Crystal King you guys want to see next. Again, please let me know and I will make that video next week. And so that's pretty much all I got. Later guys, this is Dimension Master Studios, signing off.